Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Carla A. I am a graphic designer and I've been creating and selling print on demand products online since March of 2007. I'm excited to bring you another great video showing you how you can do it too. If this is something you want to learn more about, please click the red button to subscribe to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to use Illustrator to convert clip art into black and white line art for coloring books you can sell on sites like KDP. I will be using Adobe Illustrator 2022 on a Mac. Some things may be different if you are following along using a different version of Illustrator or on a PC. Alright, let's get started. The first style of graphic does not have an outline or border around the different parts of the graphic. Our goal is to give the graphic an outline so the drawing can be colored in. The first step is to copy the image and paste it next to the original. You do this by selecting the entire image, clicking Command C, Command V to copy and paste, and then dragging the image over to the side. This allows you to keep the original intact and it's nice to have as a reference as you change the image. I like to do my edits in the original file to make it easy to find if I ever want to use this image as a line art again in the future. The second step is to remove any parts of the graphic that doesn't need to be there in the final line art. Select this direct selection tool from the toolbox. Click on any part of the image that you want removed. On your keyboard, hit delete or backspace on a PC. Continue doing this for any parts of the image that you do not want to be in your final line art. Now select the entire image by choosing your arrow tool and dragging over top the entire image. Go up here or you can go here or over here in the swatch panel to change your fill to white and change your border to black. Now you want to choose a border width. You can change this to get it the thickness that you want. Now we can tweak the image. Use your direct selection tool, which is a second arrow. So select everything, and then you can go in your swatches panel and click on the fill and choose black. Click on your stroke and then choose the white one with the line means transparent. And we don't want this to have a white fill, so we're going to make we're going to go up here and choose the fill and make that transparent. And the reason we did that is we want to see if there's anything hidden behind anything that was just an open stroke. And so um, down here we see that there was the ends of the legs here. All right, so I want to select these arms and go ahead and make those white again because. We want to hide what's behind it, and there was nothing that needed to be revealed. If you choose your second arrow here, let's say this um, piece of the ear, I want to see if I select that, then I can grab onto the anchor points or the handles and move it around if I feel like it needs um, something. You can go up here to stroke, and you can change the settings here to whatever you feel like looks good to make it and put the border on the outside you change this this makes it pointy this makes it less pointy that would make it flat and then just decide um, you know which one looks better and I want to keep it in the center let's say I wanted to make these three stripes to be thinner since they're stripes, then I could use the arrow tool or the scan, the direct tool, and I can select all of these, and then I can go to the stroke panel over here. And if you don't see your stroke panel, go up to Windows and go down to Stroke. There it is, and it will pop it up. And then I can, if I wanted to make these less, then I can do that. And I want to change these stripes also. So I'm going to select tool, select each one, 
And I can either go here and select what I want, or I can go over here and click on the eyedropper tool and go up here and select what I want it to match, and then that will make it exactly the same. Now when I do that, on this image, you can see it actually, because I've got a white fill in that, it's not it's hiding and it's a thinner stroke so it's not going to be perfect here and it's hiding this thicker line so what you can do is there's a couple ways to fix this I can click on these again and I can just remove the fill and make it transparent or another way I can do it is to go up here to the stroke or here in the stroke panel and then I can change it to inside you can see that it's now correct all right so um, just look around at your image and see if there's anything else you want to change like um, I think that this tail is too pointy so I'm going to select those and in my stroke panel I'm going to round my corner and then that makes it not as um, pointy. If I wanted to make this tail thicker, I can make an outside border. If I want to make it a smaller tail, I can do an inside border. So just play around with the one that you think looks best. The cheek, the blushing on the cheeks, I think should be a thinner line. So I'm going to select those and change that to, I'm just going to do the same three I had. As you resize your graphic, the thickness of your outline stroke will probably stay the same size. This will cause it to get thinner or thicker relative to the size of your image. There are a couple ways to fix this. Which one you choose will depend on your personal preference and or how you plan to use the graphic. The first way is to expand your borders. You do this by selecting the image and going to Object, Expand. If it's grayed out, then choose Expand Appearance underneath it, then go back up and choose Expand. Once the dialog box comes up, click OK. Now when you resize the image, the borders do not get thicker or thinner as you resize. Be aware this option takes away your ability to change the border width later on. We can test this by zooming in to our borders. If we select just the border, you can see it is now a fill with no border. The second option I am going to show you is probably going to be the better option. What you want to do is go to Preferences under Illustrator, General, and in the dialog box you'll see a checkbox next to scale strokes and effects. Click the checkbox and hit OK. Now when you resize your image, the border scales up and down in relation to the size of the image. It also preserves your ability to change the thickness of your borders if you need to resize your graphic. For instance, if I select this I can resize this to any stroke width that I want. This will come in handy when making the actual coloring book pages. You'll be able to make sure all the graphics used in the same coloring book has constant border thickness for a uniform look. When all your coloring pages have different border thicknesses, then it makes your book look cheap and unprofessional. Because this is a vector, I can also move things around if I don't like the way that something is looking. Make sure that your image is ungrouped. Select what you want to move, and then you can rotate it by going to the corner until you see this curved arrow, and then you can rotate it. You can then click on it, hold down, and drag to move it somewhere else in the image. And you kind of play around with it. Figure out where you want it. You can move 
See, this is group, so I'm going to go to object, ungroup. And I'm going to select the star. Maybe move that over here. I can make it bigger. And because I've got the scale effects and strokes set, then as I make this bigger, it's getting bigger because it's in relation to the star. So since I'm not moving the rest of the image, then that's making it look too thick. So I want to go up to Illustrator, Preferences, General, and uncheck that Scale, Strokes, and Effects temporarily. Now I can adjust it. Now remember, if I get really small, it's going to look really thick because it's not in relation to the star anymore. The bigger I make it, it's going to look thin in relation to the star, but it's going to stay perfect for the image. So one tip to remember is that if you're resizing the entire image, you want to have scale effect, scale strokes and effects checked so that all of the board, all of the strokes will scale as you scale your image. But if you're just resizing one piece of the graphic, then you will want to uncheck that so that the border will stay the same size as the image that is not moving. So let's move a few of these stars around. It'll give the kid something, an easier way to color that in. And let's copy. I'm going to do Command C, Command V on a Mac. And put a star down here. And then copy this one and put it here. I think that's cute. All right, looks good. So now let's convert the second type of graphic. For this part of the tutorial, I'm going to be working with these mermaid graphics. And I want to work specifically with this first image here. When I select it, they're all grouped together. So I want to go up to Object, Ungroup. Then I want to select the image that I want to work with. Hit Command C, Command V to copy and paste. Then I want to move it over off the screen so that I can work with it. All right, now for this tutorial, we're going to be selecting a lot of the colors in the image and turning them to the black or white as we need it. So, what I want to do so that I don't accidentally change colors on the original full color graphics. I'm going to create a new layer here in the Layers panel. If you don't have your Layers panel up, go up to Window and go down and make sure there's a check mark on Layers. Down here you see Create New Layer. Click that, select your graphic, and drag this square, it's kind of like a dot, but it's a square, up to your new layer. Now you want to lock the other layers. And you can see that this already has a drawn border. So you want to use your direct selection tool and select the border on one part of the image. Now you want to go to select, same, fill color, or fill and stroke. Most likely fill color will work. Click that and it is going to select everything in this image on this layer that is that same color. For your coloring book, you will want to make sure that you change this border to black. But what I like to do as I'm working on the graphic is to change this temporarily to a bright pink or a bright blue. This will help me make sure I change all the outlines to the same color. Sometimes a color can be similar, but not exact, and can be missed. So temporarily, making it a bright color helps me make sure everything that needs to be a black outline gets changed to black later on. Next, you will want to select anything else in the image that needs to be black. So you want to look around and make sure that everything that you're going to want to be black is this bright pink. Now you want to select the other colors one at a time. Click your direct selection tool, click on the color you want to be white, 
go to select, same, fill and stroke or fill color. And you can either go ahead and change it to white or change it to another bright color. I like to go ahead and continue to change it to the other bright color in case there is some part of the image that is almost white and I will miss it. So let's change it to a bright yellow. Now you want to select the other colors in the image one at a time and turn them to your color that you're using for white. So I want to select my direct selection tool, choose a color, go up to select, same, fill color, and turn it to the yellow that I want temporarily. If it's something like a shadow and you see that it's not anything important, you can most likely hit delete on your keyboard to just get rid of it instead of turning it the color. So let's click the next color, select fill color, and turn it to the yellow that we want. Now this is going to look really weird until we get it all done, but you'll see how it works as we get done. So you go to select, same, fill color, turn to yellow. Go to the next color, select, same, fill color, and continue to do this until you're done. Now that you have converted your entire image to these two bright temporary colors, you'll want to now change the colors to your black and white three color book. To do this, select your direct selection tool, click on the yellow, go up to select, same, fill color, go over to your swatches panel and click white. Click on the background and you will notice that there are three pieces of this image that did not get converted to white. That means that this was another yellow that we missed because it looked like the other yellow. So we are going to zoom in, click your direct selection tool again, click each one, hold shift so that you can click them one at a time, go to your swatches panel and change it to white. Now you want to select your outline color, select same fill color and change it to black. And now you have a really nice black and white coloring page image. That's it. You are now ready to easily and quickly convert any color vector to a black and white line art. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more or you are interested in learning more tips and tricks on how to make money online by creating books, t-shirts, and other products through print-on-demand websites such as KDP, Merch by Amazon, Redbubble, and more, then please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what other videos you'd like me to make.